What else? More examples, the golden rule, the iconic way in which we go about our moral systems, and every culture out there having some variant on it, it being very interesting, whether the variant is do unto others as you would have them do unto you, or is it don't do unto others as you would not have them do to you, and I suspect that tells you something about a basic pessimism of the latter cultures, but this is universal, this is all over the place, this is us, and it's sufficiently us that there's actually people who spend careers doing highly complex mathematics on ways to optimize game playing, to optimize circumstances of golden rule, and these are people who inform economists and war theorists and diplomats, game theory stuff, and there's all sorts of ways in which these strategies are optimized. The one, the classic one that was shown by an economist named Robert Axelrod is the incredibly simple strategy for going about competing with somebody else, the tit-for-tat rule. You start off cooperating. If they cooperate with you, you continue cooperating. If at some point they stab you in the back, the next time you stab them in the back in return. And if they go back to cooperating, so do you. And this optimizes a whole competitive strategy. Now this was worked out mathematically in the 70s, and the zoologist at this point looked at it and said, ha, huh, I wonder if there's any animals out there who also use tit-for-tat optimization strategies for when they cooperate and when they compete. And it turns out we're not the only ones with that either. First example, okay, horrible, vicious, nightmare, vampire bat creature that haunts our nightmares. In actuality, when a vampire bat is drinking up some cow's blood, it is being a very good mommy because what she's doing is getting blood in order to feed her babies. She's not actually drinking the stuff. Vampire bats sp store the blood in a throat sack. They fly back to their nest and they go to the babies and they disgorge the blood to feed their babies. Very interestingly, these are big social communal nests. They also disgorge blood to feed everybody else's babies. It's a whole communal feeding system. They all cooperate. Make the bats think that one of the females in there is cheating, is not fulfilling her social contract. She comes out of the nest there and you net her and you take a hold of her and you take a syringe full of air and you pump up the throat sac so it's nice and big and full and distended and push her back into the nest and everybody's sitting there saying, oh my God, look at that throat sac, look how much blood she's got in there and she's not feeding my babies. And the next round, nobody feeds her babies. They tit for tat her back they do some version of the golden rule. Now, bats are not some of the smartest folks around, but you can see the same thing in fish, in stickleback fish. Here's what you do. You take advantage of their extraordinary cognition. You take a stickleback in a tank and make him believe that he is being attacked by another fish. You put a mirror up against the side of the tank there. So, of course, he's immediately lunging at it and all of that and saving the territory and all the nationalism and, you know, that territorial waters and that kind of stuff and fighting off this invader. Now, make the stickleback think that he's got a cooperative partner take a second mirror and put it up perpendicular to him. So every time he's moving forward, he's seeing this other fish there doing the same thing, and he's saying, you know, I don't know who this guy is, but he's great because there's another guy attacking there, and we're like totally synchronized and yay team. Now, now make him think the other fish is cheating on him. Take the mirror and angle it this way so the image is deflected backward and he seems to be further back and he's saying, that son of a bitch, I can't believe it. Here we are, we're being attacked. Oh yeah, he's pretending to go, but I see he's hanging back there. Like I'm blistering my lips here on this glass here and he's just hanging back there and cheating. And the next time he sees his image, he doesn't attack it. He believes he's tit for tatting the guy. So we are not alone in this whole realm of wanting to do unto others and don't do unto others and taking tit-for-tat revenge. What is unique about us is our capacity to have not do unto others as you would have them do unto you, but to understand circumstances in which somebody else's reward is not the same sort of reward that you would have. And there are very few species out there who would understand what this one is about understanding that we might all have very different values of what things we are rewarded by. Okay, so we are somewhat unique there.